I can't see shit. Can you see shit? I cannot see shit. How bright is that? Oh, that's in my eyes. Hello everyone, I'm Mitchell Ryan Darcy and it is dark as dark. Um, I don't know how well the quality is on this um, because I forgot how dark it gets in Canada. But I'm about to go see a double feature at a drive-in. Yes, apparently there's still some still around. Uh, I am in currently at the, I forget the name of it, Drive-In 5 is it, I think it's called. And basically, I'm going to see Bohemian Rhapsody, which just came out, and Bad Times at the El Royale, which is the movie I actually really wanted to see, but because I waited so long, it's not playing anywhere else except for here in Toronto, and this is cl much closer than Toronto. So, uh, I wanted to try this out, and, uh, currently, uh, well, I, parking is interesting, um, it definitely figures out on what kind of car you drive, for example, how well your speakers are, and the speakers on this car is not that great, so I know sound is not going to be as good, and also, uh, the height of the car, because I, of course, I choose the most smallest car, like, it's so short and low to the ground that I can barely, the screen is a little bit cut off because of the um the thing on top of the car that does like it's a sun protection thing it's like a darker shade of the windshield that's sort of like i had to back up because i wanted to get close to the screen but i had to back up to get farther just so i can do it uh so i can actually now comfortably see the screen i'm still a little bit crouching on my neck but it's not too bad um i just went to the washroom here Oh, well, <laughs> I, I guess I'm going to be more reviewing more the drive-in than anything else. But anyways, over there is like a diner. It says diner. I haven't been in there yet. Uh, but that looks cool. That's where the snack bar is. The radio station is playing a lot of old music and classics. Um, and uh, the <laughs> uh, I just got back from the washroom because I had to go before the movie. And oh, my God, the washrooms, the men's washroom was Oh my god, it's so dirty, and there's shit in the toilet and all that, and like, it's like you couldn't clean, like, there's, they only do one showing a day, and the showing is one movie plus another for the price of one ticket, which I will say, for the well, price of one ticket to see a Cineplex movie, I get to see two movies for the price of one, which is very good, and then, um, so price is great, I haven't actually seen the movies yet, but we're about to, I, I'm... About 40 minutes early. I guess they're going to show pre-show soon and all that. Um, but yeah, there's this, the parking lot is barely, barely lit up. Uh, like, I think it's counting on other cars <laughs> to supply lights. Like, there's a little bit of a perim perim perimeter light, but that's about it. Uh, but yeah, the washrooms were a mess. And uh, the, hair, the only thing to dry your hands off is one hair dryer, like, blow dryer. And it, it, does, it doesn't even work. And so, and the sinks, when you go to open them, you have to hold them so they're the, the levers you have to pull down. And you have to hold it in order to get the water flowing. And if you go a little bit, it's so high pressure, it just shoots out and it deflects against, it's like a metal thing and it's like bent and it just hits it and goes flying everywhere. I tried a couple other, like I got water all over me. It's like November. Like, oh man, so bad review of washroom. Avoid the washrooms at this uh, drive-in. Anyways, uh, I'm super excited to watch the movies. I'm not going to spoil anything. Uh, I'm going to avoid spoilers and just do a general no spoiler review for both films. So that way you get more experience of me at the drive-in. So Bohemian Rhapsody, I'm super excited for. But it's it's a biopic, but I'm, I'm hearing it's not that great of a film. Like, it's, it's just, uh, it doesn't, like, it says, it, it's a movie that should rock you, like, we will rock you, but it doesn't rock you, so, and that's what I'm sort of getting at, just brief reviews and all that, but, like, I'm trying not to look at it, it's just, you know, general internet stuff and all that, so, um, I mean, Brian Singer was directing it, and then he got fired from it, like, a couple weeks left into it, and then, yeah, so... I don't know, film-wise, I'm super excited to see the lead guy who's playing Freddie Mercury, I forget his name, um, but he's in various shows and all that, and he's just recently in the Papillon movie remake, and I'm excited to see what he brings to 
uh, Freddie Mercury. And once again, I don't know that much about Queen. I have loved their songs. I love their music. I have uh, their greatest hit CDs, two of their greatest hit CDs. And I have the only full album I have by them is, you know, uh, Night at the Opera, I believe it's called. Uh, mainly, and I, I just picked that up this year, but uh, like, I am familiar with their songs and all that, but I'm not familiar with history. I just know um, various, you know, concert, like you see the get-ups that he wears on stage, and he's just, he's, he's <laughs> Freddie Mercury's awesome, and I just hope that movie uh, captures it, and maybe, I don't know, I don't know how deep it's gonna go. Maybe it'll just be more of a shallow biopic like barely scratching the surface of it and i i wonder how they're going to do the music is it re-recorded with the actors singing to make it sound like them or are they just you know lip syncing to the original queen songs like i, I want to know okay so i'm gonna do bad the review for bad like before review for bad times at el royale now because i don't know maybe my opinion will change after seeing the queen movie because i have a feeling because i'm seeing these two movies back to back i'm gonna probably compare them a lot so i'm going to try not doing that by doing this before review way before seeing any of them and so bad times at el royale the main reason i was really excited was the cast and I mean, you got John Hamm, Jeff Bridges, um, I believe the girl from Fifty Shades of Grey, and um, Chris Hemsworth, and a bunch of other people. And then you got uh, some weird original feeling plot, something about strangers at a hotel. And like, I saw the trailer for it, and I believe it's the full trailer for it in when I went to see Mission Impossible Fallout. And I, I watched the trailer, and even from that, I didn't pick up on anything story-wise except for, I guess, the landlord comes and then, you know, all hell breaks loose. Like, is it a horror film? Is it suspense? I think it's suspense mystery, but, like, is it horror? Does it turn horror? The reason I'm asking that is if it's from the producers of The Cabin in the Woods. Now, if you don't remember Cabin in the Woods or if you've never seen Cabin in the Woods and you like horror, um, what are you doing? Go watch Cabin in the Woods. That was freaking amazing. Uh, but that movie sort of twisted the genre. I went, it was, it was, it was totally original while going off of old cliches and all that. And it was brilliantly well done. And so this movie's from the producers of Cabin in the Woods. And it makes me think there's more to this film than what they're showing in the trailers. Even though it's the kind of trailer where I'm like, I'm still not sure the entire movie or that. So I'm, I, I definitely am super excited to jump into it and watch it. Um, yeah. I have no idea what to expect. So anyways, time to watch a double feature at a drive-in. It's the day after. By the time I got back, it was like two o'clock in the morning and I just wanted to sleep. So <laughs> after getting some rest, um, the feeder, it, it was uh, interesting. In the sense that, like, drive-in feeders, I, I like if there's one near you, I or one that's maybe a sh short or a little bit longer drive, but not too long. Like, I, I would recommend trying out a drive-in feeder at least once in your life. Um, definitely be cautious of what movie you're gonna go see, and like, w what what movie do you want to see that's like you're excited for, but you also you know could be open to getting ruined by other people with headlights and stuff like that in the way and all that. So <laughs> it wasn't too bad um, uh, for me, but like, the, you know, there was moments where it's like, because it was cold out, there was ports where my, my glass was f fogging and I was wiping it to make sure, it, you know, I could see the film and all that. And I couldn't have the, my car because of the way my car is, um, it takes like five or four minutes to, for the lights to turn off. Like it's a decent amount of time. Like there's no button to turn it off. I just have to unhook everything and hope that the lights turn off soon. So I can only, I only had the, the ability to turn on my car for the intermission, uh, just to heat up the car a bit. But, um, good thing the weather wasn't too cold and it, it wasn't raining, which is surprising because it's been raining every other uh, part of this week except for Halloween and when I went to see these movies so <laughs> I just thought that was interesting 
Um, but overall, the, I mean, the drive-in feeder I was at, the five drive-in, um, the washrooms was definitely the worst part. Um, snack bar wasn't too bad from what I've seen. I didn't try any of the food. I just, I had a slushie and a, a snack, uh, candy. Price was decent considering two movies for cheap. But then again, you're watching on a screen that's like, like depending on where you are in the parking lot, like even because I was, I went to the very front first. It was too much. I went back a couple spaces. I don't know if I explained this before, but like because of my windshield, my car was really lower. Like it was a Buick. So it's like even, even lower. And me being so tall, even with the lowest seat setting, it was like very hard to like my neck was a little bit creaked down just to so I could see the movie. Bohemian Rhapsody is a decent, decently well done um, biopic. Uh, what's definitely holding it up is the performances and the actors that they got to play people. Like the like the the really great casting in the sense of like it. Like for example, um, I, I looked up his name too, and I totally forget it again. Uh, Mr. Robot Guy. He um did a tremendous job as freddie like he got everything down like the mannerisms of him and all that and uh i'm not sure voice wise i don't think it's him singing i think i think they just found a early or a demo version of like freddie mercury singing or doing certain songs and whatnot and they incorporated in the film that's what it felt like i don't know because if, if that actually is him singing um, he did a spot on, spot on impression of Freddie Mercury, audio wise, if that is the case. But I, I kind of doubt it. But then again, they mixed it so well, for the most part, it actually, it, like for example, for someone who's not familiar with films in general, would probably not pick up on that and probably just think it's it's you know probably recording or like movie magic sort of thing. But. Um, well done but yeah the the casting is amazing because <laughs> it's like seeing the band like it, you felt like you were there <laughs> a bit like and um i'm gonna assume the live shows were either recorded or documented in some way and they did their best to sort of recreate certain things and spot on and some of it like for example the music videos and them on television like like those things like i've seen some images and stuff like that and it's like it like it definitely is pretty damn close uh <laughs> and it's pretty cool um the backstory and all that it sort of touched upon things it didn't really go too far into it like uh it's pr particularly freddie mercury um they went a bit into it they sort of just sort of touched his life but they didn't really like don't expect this to be like uh an exposed documentary or like you know a tell-all or something like that because it's not centered like it is a bit centered around him but it's mainly the band and that's kind of i mean once again queen without freddie mercury is good but he definitely was a, <laughs> the light of the band and um it's it, it's pretty cool funny interesting seeing them you know progress for the timeline that they did show in the movie they didn't show anything after a certain point i'm not gonna say what so you can be maybe a bit more surprised you can probably already tell what will be the main event what just from the way they edited uh early on and all that and I didn't think, you know, A Night at the Opera was, like, almost, like, basically, like, their second or third album. Like, <laughs> wow. <laughs> um, I definitely want to go and get, try and get all the rest of the Queen albums so that way I can listen and fully appreciate the band even more. Um, but, yeah, this is a really interesting, like, insight. And it leaves you open to, if you want to find out more, you can research it. You can look on YouTube, see the more performances, see the music videos and TV stuff and all that. And it's cool. Uh, learned a little bit more about Freddie Mercury. Um, not sure totally. Once again, with biopics, sometimes they dramatize things a little more. Or if it's 
they, I mean, for the most part, it felt pretty true, especially the fact that uh, the main band members for Queen were producing the movie and all that and were a part in the making of the movie. So, um, to the most part, this is probably the more most accurate uh, biopic of Queen that's out there. So, um, if you're, you like music, definitely check it out. Absolutely. Anyways, um, Bad Times at the El Royale. Mm, that movie. Okay. Uh, Bad Times at the El Royale is a very interesting movie. Um, I loved, I loved like the whole setup and everything. Like I was just eating up this movie as it, uh, as it started and everything was happening and you know basically the setup and all that. It's like, um, <laughs> uh, I this is the kind of movie where it's like I definitely recommend one viewing, um, uh, just to see what you think about it. But the problem is with the movie is I don't know if it's gonna. <laughs> Like it was good, and I enjoyed the movie. I did not. I did not have a bad time with the bad times at the El Royale. Okay, the set I think is is definitely a really strong point, along with the cast. Um, and the writing. Like my only problem with the film is I felt like they were trying to do too many original things, too many original little pieces that could have been entire movies on their own. And just mixing it all up like it's it's in the sense of like all these pieces coming together and it's like I kind of want to do a spoiler review of this movie but at the same time I kind of don't it's gonna be interesting to hear what people talk about it the more later it goes on and all that acting was good especially special notice for Jeff Bridges because Jeff Bridges is the kind of movie where he didn't have to go all out acting and he went all out acting like my gosh in this film like it it, it seemed like it was the kind of movie where it's like he didn't have to do that but he did it anyways and um he did a tremendous job but uh the the star of the show i think is cynthia uh envio or revo i i believe i apologize if i'm butchering your name or anyone's name, but yes, uh, she, <laughs> uh, her singing, <laughs> oh yeah, spoilers, uh, <laughs> don't spoil anything, um, she did a really, really good job in this movie, <laughs> she's definitely probably the breakout star of the movie, <laughs> overall, like, I'm not sure what else she's been in, but, uh, definitely looking forward to see her and more things. Um, but I, 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 music was really good, but it's, it, it definitely felt like overall this film was, is definitely like Quentin Tarantino, like uh, trying to be Quentin Tarantino, but at the same time trying to be various other things at the same time. There's so many pieces and a lot of the pieces, uh, like, I can't spoil the movie. <laughs> I, I, I can't, I, I definitely recommend if you're, if you're looking for an interesting, um, little bit weird, little bit dark, um, mystery, suspense, um, I definitely would recommend, uh, one viewing at least. Overall, I had a good experience. I don't know if I, I would ever do the drive-in again, like, and at least until I get a better vehicle, because like speaker wise, I felt like it could have been definitely a bit better. The trailers, it felt weird because when the trailer started, it sounded like it was one of those radio ads where every time they go to talk, they turn it up. And then when they stop talking, they turn it down. And then when they go to talk again, turn it up. Like it felt like that sort of audio switching. Um, but I don't. No, but when the actual movie started playing, it was a lot better than the trailers. So I don't know, maybe the trailers were off the internet or something like that. But yeah, uh, it was interesting. They were showing like really old ads, like uh, like at intermission ads for drive-in, welcome to the drive-in and all that. And then they had a couple ads which were newer and seemed like they were made for it. Um, my only, another complaint about the drive-in experience is the second last movie, Battle Royale, or Battle Royale. Uh, bad times at the El Royale is 
they ended the movie early. Like, okay, because the credits just started. I know it's like one o'clock in the morning um, or something around that. Uh, and they, the credits played, played, and then they cut the movie. Like, they just turned off the power and... And it was like it was like the crew did not like the people who worked there didn't want to stay long enough because even though there's people still want in the parking lot and people are still getting out they just cut the movie, uh, so I, I have no idea if there's an end credit scene and I kind of I'm interested to see if there is, yeah like there's there's some parts of the movie where I'm like it's edited really well, and then there's other points of this movie where it's like why did they go in that direction? Why did they do this this way? And, like, I, I just... I'm very curious what the style of film is because I'm thinking the Cabin in the Woods, Cabin in the Woods was horror and where it went and all that. Um, this one, it's like... It might... I think it might be noir that he was trying to do with this movie uh, because that that kind of explains it for the most part, but... Great music choices for the film, for the bad, bad times at El Royale, but I felt like they did choose too many songs. Um, a specific scene, you, the, uh, specifically, that I really thought was really well done was the uh, hush scene. Um, that's all I'm going to say. <laughs> I think you'll, you'll know what <laughs> scene that is um, when it happens. And there's a bunch of also other little scenes and moments where it's like it's amazing like <laughs> uh this is definitely going to be one i'm going to be uh, the kind of movie i'm going to be thinking about later on and i definitely want to i'm definitely i'm definitely going to pick up both movies eventually bad times at the el royale i just i don't know if it's gonna hold up as much on a second viewing that's the only thing i'm worried about the movie but at the very least it's a very a very fun or not fun it's more like a very <laughs> Very well wrapped piece of candy. That's what <laughs> El Royale is, and it, you don't know what the candy is going to be until you you're biting down on it. Like that's 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 El uh, that's uh, El Royale. Okay, so let me know down in the comments what you thought of Bohemian Rhapsody and Bad Times at the El Royale. Thank you very much for watching. I want you to have a nice day or night or whatever time you watch this. Have a nice whatever. Thanks again for watching. I really appreciate it.